sometimes we take for granted as embroiderers that we know how to do an applique. I know that when I got my first machine and bought an applique design, I had no idea how to do it. There were just lines on the screen and I didn't know how to do it. And the way I found out how to do applique is kind of silly and I'll tell that uh, story another day. But for this uh, video, I wanna show you how to do a very easy applique. So first I've got my um, cork uh, fabric down. This is just like as if I was stitching it on a t-shirt or a piece of vinyl or whatever. I just needed a background to show you the applique, okay? So this is the same steps you would do if you were stitching on a baby bodysuit or a composition book or anything like that. Just think of the cork as fabric. So the first step I'm gonna do is called placement. This is going to show you um, where to put your fabric and I will tell you I'm stitching out a classic truck applique that you can get at designsbylittlebee.com and it's very easy. It's, it's two applique pieces. One for the truck and this step will show you that. All right, now that I see my placement step, I'm going to take my fabric that has been freshly pressed and I'm going to cover the placement stitch. You can tell this is way too big. This is just a scrap, so I didn't cut it specifically for this project. You only need enough to cover maybe half an inch or three quarters of an inch outside on every direction, but this is just a purple scrap that I had. So you place it to cover your entire um, placement step and you can pin it I'm going to remove my pins that I had because I don't need them anymore. You can pin it. Um, you can tape it. If you're using fast frames and it goes to the edge, you can clip it to the edge. Whatever you need to do to hold the fabric down neatly and securely while it stitches the tag down. And the number one rule is if you see something start to go wrong in this next step, do not stick your fingers in the machine. If you see fabric start to curl or wrinkle in any way, stop your machine before you reach in to try to fix it. We can always fix fabric, but a lot of times uh, you do something to your finger, you can't fix that without a doctor's help. So don't do that. All right, now that that step is finished, we're going to remove our pins and we're going to trim around the applique, whatever it may be. Mine is a truck, so it kind of looks like the back view of a pickup truck. I, people, different embroiderers swear by different kind of scissors for cutting appliques. For as long as I can remember, I've been using these curved embroidery uh, scissors. They're four inch curved scissors. I will put a link to those. It's hard to do. Try not to get your hands all in there. Um, so you just trim as neatly and close as you can to that tack down stitch. Now, if you have a good, if you're using a design from a good digitizer, they will give you enough of a satin, thick satin stitch that you don't have to be perfect with this. If you have a skinny satin stitch, you need to trim real, real close. But with mine, you see that like in the corner, I didn't get that perfectly, but my satin stitches are pretty darn thick. Um, I make them as as long as I can for the hoop size and the shape that I'm digitizing for. And so you want to make sure you're working with a nice sat wide satin stitch. So the next step in this one I can see is the, the side mirrors on this truck. Now often when you do an applique, the steps will be exactly placement, tack down, and satin. Sometimes though, digitizers want to create layers. They want to show something is in the foreground and something is behind something else. So that's something that I did with this classic truck. The next step is not the satin, it's actually the side view mirrors of the truck. I did it this way so that you stitch the mirrors and then the satin goes on top of them so that it looks like the mirrors are in the front. Now 
The next step, again, is not quite yet the satin. The next step is actually the tires. Once again, this is because you want the tires to be under the truck, right? And it wouldn't make much sense if you did the whole outline of the truck and then you stitched tires on top of it. It would look like the tires were coming out of the truck. So the next step is going to be the tires and then we'll finally get to the satin stitch after that. You can always consult your step list that should come with every design you buy. It comes with every one from Designs by Little B. All right, now you see that the side mirrors and the tires are both stitched out. Again, that's to create a layering effect. But you see that neither of them interferes with your uh, tack down fabric. So the next step, finally, we're going to get to the satin stitch of your truck. It's gonna go all the way around. All right, for the next color, I can tell that I usually do blue, but I don't have any blue loaded on my machine right now, so I'm going to magic wand over to white, and I'm gonna do the window in white. The next two steps are going to be our two hearts in the back of the pickup truck. The reason I keep grabbing this is because my machine has a habit of sucking the thread up when it starts, so I like to grab it just to give it that little tail to begin with so that I don't have to re-thread. The first heart is fill, just a fill stitch, so I'm using a light pink. And the next step is going to do another applique, this is a very small one, for your second heart. Depending on the size and the um, shape of the design, I choose whether I want objects to be fill or applique. For this second heart, I thought it was big enough where a fill would be way too much. So there is your placement for your heart. I've got yet another scrap. This is a scrap piece of faux leather that I got from Walmart. The color was raspberry. And I'm going to use just the corner of it because I might be able to eke out another key fob <laughs> out of what's left. You can tape it down. You can pin it. Um, I tend to just hold this one little piece. The reason I tend to hold vinyl for my applique tack down when I know that putting your fingers in and holding material is usually not advisable um, is because vinyl is so sturdy, it's not going to wrinkle up like fabric will. You know what I mean? As it's tacking down, vinyl isn't going to fold over itself or anything like that. It's just gonna stay stiff right there. So I do feel comfortable just holding that very edge. Of course, you do it what makes you comfortable. You can pin it, you can tape it, and secure it for that tack down. And the next step, as I can see from my step list or from what I see on my machine, is going to be the satin stitch for that pink heart. All right, here's what we've done so far. We've got our purple truck base piece all down. We've got our window, our heart, our small hot pink applique heart. And the rest of the truck is just details to help it look like a really cute little truck. So the first one that I see on my step list or on my machine screen is the purple tailgate. that I'm going to do purple to match the outline. The next steps are all detailed in your step list, or I like to look at them on my machine. And it's going to be uh, red tail lights, and then there's a silver or gray bumper, and then the license plate. And of course, I keep saying the names of colors. You can stitch them in any colors you want, obviously. So you just stitch out the rest according to the step list of your design.
so there you have it your adorable applique and just remember it's placement tack down the fabric and then satin and watch your step list to see what order the digitizer has put them in in case there's any there are any other elements that stitch in the middle of those okay i'll see you in the next video and i'll chat with you in the group